When people look for a silver lining in COVID-19, they often point out that it usually spares young children. But here's what people also have to understand. COVID-19 may not be killing many young children, but the effects of the pandemic can. When Melinda and I decided to focus the foundation on global health, we learned that millions of children were dying in developing countries from diseases like malaria. We decided that we would both prevent kids from getting malaria and make sure they didn't die of it. Malaria is spread by the Anopheles mosquito. And so one thing you can do is use a bed net to have the kids sleep under at night so that avoids the biting. Also, if a child does get bitten, there are some great drugs that make sure that they stay healthy. And over the past 20 years, the world has made huge progress fighting malaria with both of these tools. The number of deaths has dropped by 60%. Unfortunately, coronavirus disrupted all of this work. COVID-19 and malaria might seem like they have nothing to do with each other, but when COVID-19 strikes, it disrupts the entire health system. An example of this is what happened in Sierra Leone during the Ebola epidemic in 2014. The hospitals were overwhelmed, the healthcare workers were either sick or far too busy, and no one had time to focus on bed nets or diagnosing malaria to hand out the drugs. So malaria flourished, and in the end, that increase in malaria killed more people than Ebola did. And this is what we're afraid of, uh, with COVID-19 as it's spreading across Sub-Saharan Africa. We expected 2020 to be a year of great progress in the fight against malaria. We had healthcare workers organized to hand out more bed nets than ever before. When the pandemic started, many of these campaigns had more risk to be canceled. And so without those bed nets, you have more people getting infected, more people seeking treatment. And so we've looked at this unfortunate intersection of malaria and COVID to try and figure out what's going to happen with malaria deaths. We are seeing that there'll be an increase of at least 40,000 more lives lost. That's the best case scenario. If a high percentage of those bed net campaigns are postponed, and if there is reduced access, to the life-saving drugs, uh, say a third less, then we'd have over 200,000 additional deaths. In just months, that would mean COVID-19 has erased the last decade of progress. We'd be back where we were in 2009. Well, these projections galvanized the world into action to say we need, even in the face of COVID, uh, to try and get these bed nets out. Countries like Benin, which has one of the highest malaria burdens in the world, leaders sprang into action. Before COVID-19, Benin distributed bed nets out of centralized locations. And that was an efficient way to get them to many people. In normal times, that's the best approach. However, here in the pandemic, asking people to come to that centralized location could cause spreading of the disease. So instead, healthcare workers used satellite imaging with maps of where people lived, and they actually took the nets out to the households. Gathering data in a very accurate way does make a huge difference. And so Benin is on the path to getting bed nets to almost every home in the country. And they've done it without creating more risk of COVID-19 infection. Benin is only one of many countries that's responding to this challenge. We also have Mali, Niger, and Senegal doing innovative programs to make sure malaria deaths don't go up uh, by that large number. Because of this, we expect that we'll be fairly close to the best case scenario, but we still have a lot of work to do. COVID-19 continues to spread in Africa, and the economic fallout will have far-reaching effects, particularly if the donor nations turn inward and don't continue the foreign aid that's made all this malaria progress possible. The investments we make in primary healthcare in Africa do far more than just help us reduce malaria deaths. That primary healthcare structure is what we depend on to see new diseases coming. If we get good diagnostic tools, good training out there, 
then we'll be able to detect any new disease very early on. That early detection could make all the difference in the world and avoid the incredible damage we've seen with COVID-19. And so we can make these communities far healthier. We can achieve health equity and we can stop the next pandemic before it gets large.